Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity once more to gather in your presence and to share with one another and to uh, glean from John, who was by your side, and learn from your feet and heard from your ears. And Lord, we pray that we will be blessed from his ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 John 6, 22. All right. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw Jesus that was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boat and went to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. Verse 25. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Then they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him who he hath sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then? that we may see and believe thee, what dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. 33. For the bread of God is he which came down from heaven, and giveth life unto the world. And said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. <laughs> Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and he that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. 38. For I have, I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing but should raise it up at the last day and sees the son and believes in him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then complained about him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. 42. Mm -hmm. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I have come down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said to them, Do not murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. 46. Not that any man has seen the Father, say he which is of God, he has seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me have everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat, therefore, and not die. 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. 
The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. 54. So whoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is what this is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna, and now are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever and ever. Amen. Now, these things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Amen. I'm happy. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> it's a pretty strange people, isn't it, in 26? Yeah. Where they don't believe him because of his miracles, but they believe because they had eaten bread. Or did he eat? Yeah, and then in verse 30, he says, well, what sign can you show us? Yeah. Mm. What more do they need? The same well, as we do. I think it's in 28, though, too, when they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? That's kind oh. of funny. Right? Well the, well, the Jewish yeah. philosophy was certainly based on works, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the whole idea of just believe. Right. And I think right there just shows that they want to be the little gods. Yeah. Well, he they, contrasted, they, yeah, he, con oh, I'm sorry, he contrasted uh, chapter four, you know, when they talk about, you know, he, you seek me not because you saw miracles. And then in chapter four and verse eight, he said, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. So I guess it's whatever audience. Well, this is, this is the spiritual explanation of the feeding of the 5,000. Mm. Mm. Yeah. That was a physical feeding. This here is a spiritual feeding. And he's talking about bread and manna and his life and coming down from heaven. So this is the spiritual um, explanation for um, the earlier um, miracle that took place. Yeah, and that, that's so true because, you know, it's manna that fell from heaven. They know the story. Right. They didn't know the application. It's interesting, too, that um, the spiritual lesson is similar to the woman at the well, except he speaks of water there. Ah, you drink of this water and mm -hmm. you will thirst again. Right. right. So it's the water and now the bread. Amen. I'm trying to make the link between the water and the blood, though. Not really doing a good Thank job. You. Me too. Well, the first I would understand is the written word, but you know yeah. the in between the water and the blood. I don't know. Yeah. Right. Well, the water is the spirits. Well, they both have life too, and then the life is in the blood. And his blood was shed right when he got his side poke. What was it? Water, water, water and blood. blood. That, that must have really water. hit them. Yeah. You know. And then they, yeah, they did that. They did that question. Yeah, I was linking that to Matthew. Yeah. Whoops, sorry. Um, no, go ahead, Brian. Um, I was just going to uh, say it kind of clicked in my mind this morning. I, I was reading, you know, about the woman at the well, and uh, it clicked in my mind hunger and thirst for righteousness. Um, Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. So it's really the same spiritual lesson. Yeah. And in both, he says, they shall not die, right? He said, well, you shall not thirst. And here, doesn't he say, um, you shall not hunger? Yeah. Or he said, you well, shall not die. Probably both, right? He said, you did eat and were, were filled. 
and then he gives the spiritual lesson for that. You know, labor not for the meat which perishes, right? Yeah, going back to work, right? Jesus's response there is, this is the work of God that you believe in him, whom he sent. Right? And they still come back. Okay. Now work something. <laughs> yeah, they're still stuck on their physical self. They're yeah. still, it's all about me. It's not yeah. about glorifying him because of the miracles or that he fed them. It's my belly is full. I feel great. You're going to keep doing people, this. Yeah. These people had to hear, hear about it. If they weren't at, present at the feeding of the 5,000, they definitely heard from a lot of people about it, for sure. Right. Okay. So my question is, in verse 26, not because you saw the signs. What are the signs that he's talking about there? Mm. Are those spiritual signs? Maybe prophetic in, fulfillment or what do you in what do you my think? book it says the miracles yeah that's what i would yeah. think yeah and that's what mine says too miracles <clears throat> well miracles are signs right yes yes um, and the feeding of five thousand people with a basket of food is is a miracle mm. yeah. amen that remember that you know Luke portrays this a little bit differently. Um, you know Luke nine eleven and the people when they knew it followed him and he received him and spake unto them of the kingdom of God and healed them that had need of healing. So you know there's there's a there's a lot that's been going on during this feast. Is that what you want to call it? This feeding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's certainly done miracles previous to this, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can't believe that the word didn't go out about the water being turned into wine. Yeah, hey. the paralytic uh, at the pool, uh, yeah. the, the man whose child had died. Or These are all conspiracy was. theories. They're all conspiracy <laughs> theories. <laughs> um, I think they had that terminology well, back then, Sue. <laughs> that's, that's really a good point. Because they're going, they're going to their to their um, to their priests or whatever, and asking questions, and they're mm -hmm. quelling everything that they've heard. Mm -hmm. So they're, you know, it's the same. It, it really is the same now. Right? You hear one thing, and then you hear another thing, and you're really not sure um, what is correct. And so they run to the leadership to find out and get told to ignore it. Exactly. Right. Yeah, they say that he's got a demon and that he's possessed and he was from illegitimate family and he's from Nazareth. What's that all about? Hey. Haven't hey. we seen him grow up these 33 years, 30 years? And isn't he just a normal man, a carpenter's son? And, and really not even that? Yeah, I, I wonder how present he was with all these people before when he was growing up. You know, I mean, I know he went to the tabernacle, the, the feasts and everything, because they all did, right? Well, yeah, for, in 42, they say, yeah, is this, not, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Yeah, they knew him. Those that were in the area yeah. definitely knew him. Yeah. So how did the Jews think he was going to come? I know, I know that they were expecting him to come as a king conquering the, the uh, Romans and, you know, making everything theirs. But um, did they expect he was not going to be a mortal man? What, what was it that they were actually looking for? They didn't they read were, Isaiah. They actually thought he was going to appear without them knowing where he was born and from whom he was born to. Because it mentions that once somewhere that we know we know where he was born. We know his parents, you know, and that's, right, right. Yeah, that's what they... Oh, here it is. Chapter 7. No, wait. Verse 27. <laughs> <laughs> chapter oh. 7. Well, it's also, also 6, 40, 42. <laughs> In John? 
Yep. And yeah. chapter seven, what? 27. Have we gone ahead? We know where yeah. this man is from, but when the Christ comes, no one knows where he is from. Right. Yeah. You know, so that was their misconception that he would just appear and nobody mm. would know. But these like at the porch of the temple, right? At the porch of the temple. Mm. Satan tempted him was at the porch, right? But these men were supposedly learned people. I mean, they were in the crowd too. Supposedly. Supposedly, yeah. And I mean, if they studied the Old Testament, which they said they did, it's right there. I mean, but there were also regular people there that listened to those that were in, in you know, temple people. They didn't all have their, they don't all have their the word. They're listening to the word from the temple, and and when it said it's a a, a group of, you know, other people, when the people were standing on the other side, you, you know, so so it could have been also what the church at that time was portraying how Christ will come just just now even today how the Jews um, believe how Christ will come and that he hasn't come yet he hasn't come through the east gate or it's true well it's like our perception yes I mean it's our perceptions today of of, of God a lot of them are, are misguided and, and it's it's really studying honestly studying the word of God remember earlier in, in the book it said you search the scriptures and then, then you think you find eternal life, but it, it testifies of Jesus. And that's that's what they had to look for. They had to look for Jesus in it, and they weren't. They were looking for, and that's what he kept, for their, their way out of bondage. And he keep it reiterating this whole chapter of himself. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. And believe. I didn't count how believe there are there, but you, one, two, yeah. three, four, five, six... There's a lot of believe, believe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's so hard just to believe. You know, you really, you really, you want to do something. <laughs> you want to see something. You want to see yeah. fire coming down from heaven. <laughs> but yeah. we will shortly, but it won't be from him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't think it's, I don't think it's relevant um, how he was going to appear. Um, but I think you hit the nail on the head, Laurie. Um, he's in front of you. Do you believe what he, he is right now? Do you believe him? Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. Uh, do yeah. you believe him? doesn't mm -hmm. matter when he appears, how he was going to appear, whether he's going to appear as a king or a pauper or a prophet. Uh, the thing is, do you believe who is in front of you right now? And what he's saying. Yeah. yeah. And that's the beginning of the work happening in them. Mm. I don't remember if it's, uh, um, there were, I, be, I believe, I thought there were some that were expecting a, a spiritual kingdom that was going to uh, raise up a king versus uh, the physical body of an individual uh, being Christ. I don't understand what you said. Well, <clears throat> I thought that not everybody in the, looking at the Old Testament believed that a, a physical person was going to be born, that it was going to be a spirit-filled filled kingdom, uh, a spiritual one, not one that um, was a physical body. But I don't, and I don't remember why I was thinking that. But Well, I mean, I think they thought a Messiah was going to come. Yeah. Not with a kingdom that's made by man's hands. <clears throat> yeah, remember they wanted to take by like force. Was mm -hmm. going to come back? I mean, that would be kind of a spirit thing. Mm. So this this verse, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood. I mean, that is a hard saying, you know, because in the Old Testament, they sprinkled the blood. You know, they were certainly familiar with the sprinkling concept. They never ate it. They, they took never. it literally. They took it literally. Yeah. And because they were forbidden to eat blood and they took it literally, it freaked them right out. Yeah. I mean, you can kind of un understand that. Yeah. What was well, the, 
significance of the table of showbread in the temple. There's the seven loaves of bread. Mm -hmm. Or were there 12? Well, oh, there's 12. 12. One for each tribe, right? Yeah. yeah. And what was the significance of that? Well, that was yeah. Symbolizing God's provision. Yeah. And the priest, so to me, yeah. I think that's what he's pointing to is the show bread. You know, you're, you're, I created this bread. I created the show bread for you here. Um, and, and that represents the show bread in the sanctuary. And they were to take that as a provision. And this is he's provided for a provision. They're hungry. And he's saying, well, I'm the bread of life, really. This right. is one that you need to hunger and thirst after. And I, and I think what he was showing them was their physical sense in, in how they live by eating and drinking um, the wine. And that he, he's trying to convert them to the spiritual aspect of in order for them to partake and have eternal life. You know, they were missing the eternal life aspect of what he was trying to say. It wasn't too foreign in their thinking to uh, when Jesus said to eat his flesh. That wasn't too far out of uh, out of reason. Well, because the priests ate a part of that. Yeah, they, the that's priest right. ate the, yeah. ate the uh, bread on the Sabbath day. They replaced the 12 loaves of bread on the Sabbath day, and they ate that on that Sabbath day. So making that next jump, if you will, spiritually. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, he, and, he's helping. And they them. ate the meat. Yeah, and some of the sacrifice had to be consumed too. That's, That's correct. But they did yeah. not partake of the blood. Yeah, the blood. So where where, where Lori is talking about? Yeah. The, the funny thing is here is he he explains it all. Um, if you start in verse twenty six. He says, most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures yeah. to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal on him. Then you jump down to 29 and he says, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. Mm -hmm. Then you jump down to 32 and he says, most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to you. He's saying, I'm the Messiah over and over. He's been telling these guys, I've been sent by my father. Yeah. And if the, if, if the represent, you just carry that representation of bread, on to eat my flesh and drink my blood. He, he's been explaining it the whole time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He gets more and more detail and depth, doesn't he? Yes. Hmm. Well, and I think they maybe had a theological knowledge, but he's telling them, you know, you, you have to take me into yourself. You know, it's yeah. not just a brain issue. Um, hmm. You know, I, I have to be in you. Mm-hmm. Right. So the you kingdom have to, of God is within you. Yeah, that, that's where he comes to. And it's the yeah. same. It's the same. It's the same way he talked to Nicodemus. I mean, when he told Nicodemus he must be born again, that was foreign and shocking to him because it was Gentiles that were considered the newborns or the the you know the, the new babies. You know when they when they converted to Judaism. So so that was that was the shock value that he used for Nicodemus. And this is kind of a. Yeah, this is a shocking statement for them. And they're told that the blood is forbidden. Yeah. Also ask, well, show me a sign. What is the sign? And this was just coming off as miracle. Yeah, they didn't get it, did they? The sign is standing in front of them. Right. Yeah. Well, to, to Brian's point, he is explaining all of that, but um, none of that can happen. Unless um, uh, verse 37 and verse 44 happen. Mm. Yeah. And All 44. That the giveth, yeah. And verse 44, no man can come to me except the father that sent him. 
-hmm. to have that spiritual experience um, comes from the father. It it can't come from within. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, 60 really explains that. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying who can understand it. Now, right. so that at least they're, they're, it, it, it's, they're starting to try to reason this. You know, it's coming at them. It's like, you know, man, this is, this is hard to understand what he's trying to tell us here. Yeah. And, and I think that's what he's, he's, he's differentiating. He says, well, then obviously people, it's not the literal that I'm talking about. <laughs> right. Here. There's a spiritual lesson here I'm trying to teach you. Yeah. That's where, uh, well, I just noticed in 51, the way it's worded on mine, it says, the last part of it says, and the bread I will give you is, is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I re- re- misread that. I thought he said he gave his life. Well, he did that too. Yeah. Okay. So I, think, I think also he continues to... Um, um, explain it but of course I'm gonna I'm gonna breach that gap that that forbidden zone and I'm gonna go to verse 61 yeah. says, does, does this offend you let's, let, hey Dan, let's, Dan let's, let's let's read does this offend you no not at, <laughs> not at all Brian I'm reading from it. I'm reading from verse 61 Dan I yeah, does no, this offend Brian, you Brian let's stop complaining through. and start yeah. at 60 and read four <laughs> verses <laughs> when Jesus knew in him, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? What then if you should see the son of man ascend where he was before? It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are mm-hmm. life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they who they were who who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. <clears throat> I think that um, what's really happening here is, and I think we touched on it a little bit earlier. That is, their expectations were completely different, and not just in his birth, but what he was coming to do oh, and yeah. that's it why that's why they, right and and you touched on it they didn't understand that they needed to be spiritually woken that they were asleep their expectations were of earthly things that of but not of spiritual and that's why he mentions this um in um 63 are you so, saying they need to be woke <laughs> no, not even, not even close. <laughs> but if you look at the, but if you look at, is he speaking to the people that don't believe him, or the people that believe him? I think he's speaking to the people that don't believe him, the Laodiceans. Mm. Oh yeah, he's speaking to both of them, but he does bring out those who do not believe, right? But because they, right. they, they are the wheat and the tares. But he he's said, he's those who don't believe. But if you look at the parallel from what Brian was talking about to now in our time, most of the Christian denominations right now think he's going to come back to this earth and set up a kingdom here for a thousand years. Same deal. But it says there, it says there many, many of his disciples, when they heard it, said, it is a hard saying who can understand it. So he says clearly even his disciples Unless he's calling all the people disciples who were there. Well, read again. I'm sorry. Read again verse 61. It's exactly who he was speaking to as his disciples. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them. Does this offend you? Yeah, Doubting Thomas was there. And they had unbelief. Mm -hmm. I think to just point these words, they they didn't have the, yeah, the belief. Mm -hmm. I mean, they saw right. and they knew, but they didn't believe. Well, it's just like the message going to the Adventist church today, mm, isn't it? Yeah. There are yeah. a lot of new things. God is revealing new yeah. truth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there are many that are unwilling, especially in positions of authority, are unwilling yeah. 
to accept it yeah. because it's too different. Well, that's why they've given us our 28 funda belief, fundamental beliefs, right? You can't, you can't go away from them. We have our own <laughs> creed now. That's the reason why we weren't supposed to have a creed. Well, you know, you know, we, <clears throat> but that's, that we were all, but this is the issue that they're dealing with as well. Yeah. They've been, they've been um, taught since childhood uh, of these truths yeah that from the oracles of god you know and this is the way it is and they're all of them are battling against that just like we do today exactly every christian, denomination, every christian denomination around claims that they have the truth mm -hmm. there's about 30 thousand. some thousand of them right yeah yeah mm -hmm. I'm not sure if this is about the, the truth or not, but they are expect they are expecting or wanting him to stay on this earth, be a king, get rid of the Romans, and live ever ever after. They did not want him dying on a cross. They did not want him ascending to heaven. Their perception was, he's my king. He's here now. Let him no. reign. And that's exactly what he's saying in sixty three. He says well, the flesh profits nothing. It's the spiritual that we're talking about. It's the unseen. It's the things that you think and the way that you, your, the methods that you use in operating every day. Yeah. I think, I think if you go back five years, all of us were stunned. <laughs> we were stunned, right? With what we like, learned, yeah. Like what? <laughs> what? But did not your heart burn your, your within heart you? Burn within you. Burn within you. Amen. Well, and, there's, then, and then there's the verse 66 from that yeah, right, many right, of his right. disciples went back and walked no more with him. Right. So right. Jesus said unto the twelve, will ye also go away? Then mm -hmm. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou, yeah. the words of eternal life. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, we and I say that right now. That thou art Christ, the son of the living God. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered him, have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? Mm. He's Judas, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Mm. Thank you, Jeff. So there it is, there it is again. I mean, he told them already that he's going to be betrayed. Yeah. And then they yeah. act like the night of that. What is it me? Who is it? He, well, he I, I think even, even within themselves, though, too, because Peter denied him three times. Um, uh, Thomas, Thomas right. was Dad there was. as well. And, 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 and we can look at ourselves, us too, when those things come up to us and we're like, mm -hmm. you know. Well, he's sitting right in front of them and they can't figure it out. And he says it so many times. Yeah. Hey, he Dan, are you were so many times too. He's sitting in yeah. front of us too, Cynthia, and <laughs> right, we don't right. get it. I got it. <laughs> hey, Dan, are you a prophet? See, I now know why you put all the question marks. We ended up at chapter seven. <laughs> <laughs> right up the door. And you can't even blame Lori. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you go through, and how many times has he told them? I think Lori went through that whole thing. Well, how many times does he tell us? Yeah. How many times does he keep on bringing us back to the same ground or, or we keep on, you know, coming back on that same ground and, and, and yet he's got to bring us back through it again. He, he says, you're not getting it now. You're not getting, it. you know, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a little bit more to add to that so that you can get it. And then when you add, when you have some of that, I'm going to give you a little bit more and I'm going to give you a little bit more. Do you think it's so it's because you're not getting it or it's because you are getting it, which he then increases what you've got? So yes, the, of course. Probably a little of both. Yeah, I think it is. that mm -hmm. that, And I think they, they, they received it because my heart is exactly where um, Simon Peters is. Lord, to whom shall I go? You, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Where am I going to go? You, you have light. Like, the word and there's nowhere else to go there's nowhere else to go no and he did he did include his 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 brothers his other disciples with him 
to whom shall we go is what I, you know. He, right. He's not alone. He says, well, I think we're all in the same boat here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because they, they decided then to stay. They could have walked away also. Yeah, well, you come, away from, come away from this with the basic question and the most important one. Is the Father drawing you to Christ? Mm -hmm. Are you being drawn? That was. Are you being I'll, drawn? He yeah. brings that up in verse sixty-five, in verse forty-four, yeah. and in verse thirty-seven. That's Amen. the most important thing. All the knowledge, <laughs> yeah. all the Bible studies, all the prophecies, all the chiastic mm -hmm. structures mean nothing yeah. unless hey, you're hey, drawn by the Father. <laughs> unless you're drawn by the Father, it all means it's nothing. Amen. You know? It's Amen. Few, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a waste of time. Yeah. Um, and that's what I say to myself. Um, you know, am I being drawn? It, what, what, is, there, is there something that's happening and changing within me as a yes. result of the word? If it's it, not, I'm not being drawn by the Father. Yes. That's right. That to me is the most powerful. These are the most powerful. Part. I, I couldn't even begin to, to break down a chiastic structure of this anyways. But if there were a center of it, I would think it is 44 and 45 because because that that is and we have to go to the mountaintop. We have to we have to be taught by God. I know we, we come together as, as a group to learn and to grow, but ultimately we have to come to God. We have to go to the mountaintop and 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 seek seek to be taught of God. And he mm. promises right there. He promises right there that that's that that's what we can do and it's mm -hmm. his drawing power that does it all this this totally shows just our our total incapability even to come to christ it mm -hmm. has to be the drawing of god yeah. i mean every aspect of, of our christian experience it's it's god drawing yeah and i think verse 54 kind of implies Amen. and that. it's really interesting Lori? Go ahead, Lori. I think verse 54 kind of implies that death and resurrection experience, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. Eats my flesh and drinks my blood, has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. I mean, they know what last day is. Yep. <laughs> and it's funny, I think, too, that in, um, well, Peter kind of expresses this, doesn't he? He says, um, you have the words of eternal life, right? That they might know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ. And in 69, he says, also, we have come to believe. So they already have justification. They already wow. have, their minds have been changed. They have come to believe and know that you, you are, are the Christ the son of the living God. So they've had that initial transformation experience. It's just they're trying to, like we are, we're trying to weed through the stuff that we need to unlearn, right? Mm -hmm. Where there is God. And I think that's where these guys are. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That does. Because we are there. We are there on learning and, mm. and, and learning. Ellen White writes something in, in that as well. Many will have to um, learn and, un and unlearn uh, quickly. Or, uh, I can't remember the rest of it. Yeah. In a few short months, what... Uh Many others have had years to learn. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the one. I'm not quite sure whether I've unlearned more than I've learned. I think so. <laughs> when I first <laughs> went to God. when I first went to Kingdom Dynamics and I first heard Pastor Tim, I went, "What is he talking about?" But I just kept getting drawn back there again and again and again. And it's like, Gene, just shut up, sit down, and listen. And in a while, maybe you'll understand. And who was drawing us back? Jesus. Yeah. Right? That's right. That's what we're God. talking about. The Father. The Father. The Spirit. Yeah. The Spirit. Yeah. yeah. It's the Father. Yeah. Well, I know we kept wanting to come back. It was like we couldn't wait for the next Sabbath. Right. Uh, no. I know. Time went by so fast. <laughs> I know. It was like, whoa. And then, when I, 
And then when I started listening to Tim Jennings on Common Reason, I came up against more stuff that was ingrained in me that I had believed about an angry God and stuff. And, and there was another spiritual battle, but I kept getting drawn back to that too. And the more <laughs> I reasoned with it and the more I looked at the Bible, I went, no, what I've been taught is wrong. Mm -hmm. It's all wrong. And they were having the same. They were having the same battle. All yes. these men, right. exactly. The whole right. Jewish nation. Yeah, they were in. They were in this same. This same battle. And the Christian nation right now is having this same battle. Yeah. Yeah. It's finding that balance between worshiping God in spirit and in truth. You know. Mm. So we can have all the intellectual knowledge and that's wonderful but it's of itself it's worthless unless it leads us to the, the spiritual yes. aspect spirit and in truth unless we have this holy spirit unless we have that deeper understanding that real relationship that intimacy all the head knowledge you know the pharisees had that yes but they didn't bring it it, it didn't transfer from here to here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. I mean, look at what it took to change to change Saul into Paul. And he said he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. And it took an encounter with Christ himself to change him. He and was so him. sure he was right. Mm -hmm. And it's not them, it's us. Yeah. Yep. Type and anti type. Yep. Well, doesn't the Bible say all these things were written down for those that live in the last days? Amen. You know, that's interesting because no one ever in all my years has ever even attempted to study Revelation or Daniel or any of those books. And now all of a sudden, everybody's studying. Well, not everybody, but well, it's the spirit like, moving. Yeah, and that is an I think another indication that he is coming mm -hmm. really soon. Well, it's because, um prophet is prophetic, isn't it? It yeah. should be going to it, running to and fro. Yep. yep. He the, he's opening this up for us to prepare us because he will be here soon something to him about why are some of these pastors I hear about they're not they're not even uh, touching on Daniel or Revelation and they're they're Adventist and he said well don't you know Gene that there's a movement within the Adventists to ignore those things now to ignore Ellen White and to ignore Revelation and and uh, Daniel and I'm like well that's funny that's ex those are the things we were told to study. Of course, Satan doesn't want us to. Another, another angle on <clears throat> verse 40, 61, when he asks the question, does this offend you? He's really asking, look, Jim, you're pretty poor. Uh, you're pretty naked. And you're pretty blind. Am I offending you by revealing to you where you are right now? Mm -hmm. am, am I offending you? Does that does that that does that bother you? Uh, does the truth of what I'm sharing with you is is that bothering you? That's what he's asking us. Does yeah. what he's telling us about who we are, who I am, yeah, does it offend him, or mm -hmm. does it offend? Does it me offend now? us? Yeah, you hope, it offend hopefully, it does. Because mm -hmm. if it offends me, you know, I'm going to avoid him, right? I mean, that's what you do. You run away from the situation, right? That right yeah, after verse that, 66, that's, verse 66. That's what it says. Yeah. They all went away. They went away from the, yeah. Little three angels message action right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and, and it's, it's also a, interesting. Question, does Christ in general, does he offend us? Right. Mm. Does he offend us to be able to speak about him Truth. and give him thanks and glory when something happens and you know when somebody says something and do we 
uh, am I able to, or do I get offended to bring his name up on my lips and say, uh, right. that was Christ the Lord that um, intervened on my behalf. Yeah. Um, am I offended God. by him? Uh, it, it's it's quite a it's quite a question that he asks us. Are we offended by him? That's what he's asking. Uh, it was interesting. Um, one time, like when I was down to White River and I was working homeless ministry, my vehicle broke down, and the only way I had to get into town was walk. And the Lord impressed me that if I went out there and started walking, and I asked him for rides, he would give them to me. Only he told me to ask for chariots. So I'd go up there and I'd start walking and I'd say, Lord, you got any chariots out here? I wasn't bumming or anything. I was just walking. And somebody would stop and give me a ride nearly every time. One of the ladies I was talking to, she asked me what I was doing. And I told her I was going into town because I did homeless ministry. She said, nobody, nobody ever talks about the Lord or Jesus anymore. Hmm. Nobody so apparently a lot are offended. Or they're afraid they're so afraid that someone else is going to be offended if they mention the Bible or God or Jesus that they don't dare bring it up. Yeah. I, I keep remembering when there are times where I feel like I should say something. And I hear him say, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really, uh, it just, it gives me courage. Where is it in the Bible that it says that uh, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before the Father? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I also think that people were offended by Christ because it wasn't just his words. It was the fact that he was rejected by so many other people that were in leadership. And, you know, people knew that if they accepted him as a Messiah, they were going to be thrown out of the synagogue. Right. Mm -hmm. They were going to be disgraced. Yeah. And that's what they would face. So that would come to us too. Than the words the that summit's said, already come. Right. Um, but we do need to listen to what God's telling us. And I, I often don't listen, but I try to, and I don't always hear right, but um, the other day the Lord gave me courage. I, it was on my birthday, and I got sideswiped. The man's truck ran right into me. Oh, my and, oh, no. Uh, I, I saw the truck coming right at me, and I laid on my horn because I think he could, didn't see me. I think I was in his... his um, blind spot. Yes, thank you. You're so welcome. I pulled over, and he was very nice. And I'm looking at the damage. It wasn't that much. I have an old Subaru that's got 164,000 truck, I call it. And um, I'm looking at it. It's not that much damage, but I knew that, you know, I could get that front fender looking nice again. And um, I just was saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? My, my intention was to, you know, he was going to pay. And I just had this strong impression, let it go. Let it go. And the man's looking at me. I'm just hesitant. And I, he said, what do you want to do? And I said, I was just honest. I said, I'm just sitting here and I feel like God is just telling me to let it go. He broke down and started crying. Oh, no. Wow. And hugging me. And long story short, um, we prayed. I prayed with him. And he left with steps to Christ. And I don't just pass that out unless the Lord. But right. he he renewed his relationship with God. Amen. Wow. And he decided Amen. that God loved him and was merciful to him. And that he says, he was praising God. He's like, I can't believe I this happened to me. And like, it was a good thing, you know. <laughs> I can't believe it happened to me either. No, it wasn't yeah. the same though. <laughs> but take side swiping your car to save a soul. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, so, right you know, I looked at it. So this uh, man is more important uh, to God than my car. And I know people may think that was a foolish decision on my part, but. No, if God yeah. tells you. And we just need to listen because we don't know 
and not be ashamed what people are going to think, especially for administering mercy to them. Um, so, amen. So is that uh, symbolism of eating from the bread of heaven? Mm -hmm. All right, eating from Christ's bread. So I want to circle back to that. Um, we talked about the 12 disciples. Jesus has 12 disciples. We talked about the 12 loaves in the sanctuary, and which represent the 12 tribes. And as we've talked about in the past, the 12 disciples are the reflection of the 12 tribes of the New mm -hmm. Testament and the Old Testament, and we not. And it's interesting that as I went down through here, there's 12 times it's mentioned everlasting life, or I'm the bread of the life, or I give life, or I'm going to rise it up in the last days, everlasting life. You know, it's all about the bread is, is, is the way, it's a positive thing. You know, some, we read so much in Revelation of the negative and we have to pull the positive out but we're not seeing any judgment in here are we this is no. this is the this is the way this is the way and just for kicks bread the word bread is mentioned about 16 times there could be one or two more or less not that that may or may not be a significant number but it's a significant number and that it that's it, a lot yeah. <laughs> And right, I'll, he's saying the, it many times. The emphasis is bread, 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 bread. And we were reading all about bread, you know, at the beginning of the at the beginning of the chapter and all of the significance there. So so bread and life. I mean those those two, and you're gonna get it through his spirit. So, so these, in some ways, Jeff, would be the fragments that were left over, huh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> go with that, Jim. What does that mean? Well, I, I, I think that, you know, this is the, as, as I was sharing earlier, that this is the spiritual explanation to the actual uh, miracle of the five, feeding the 5,000 or more. Uh, this yeah, is, I mean, I this look at really this and, and see... Um, Julie's example, she is eating of the bread of life, right? And and the young man that ran into her, he's getting the fragments. He's getting the leftover pieces. And right. and, and and he he that can grow. That's the seed, right? We talked somewhere about in Sabbath school class, the seed dies and then it blossoms and provides many more seeds. Only because Julia listened and obeyed. That's all about eating the flesh of God. Yeah. Okay. And Jesus, I Jesus said, I to tell that I story have food. There was nothing good in me, but I just did what God, it wasn't me. I, I look at my car and think, oh, I wish it was fixed, but <laughs> well, I know I, I did your, the right thing. I liked your answer earlier when you said, I always listen, but I don't always hear right. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done that. <laughs> yep. Sometimes he has to talk to us because we're we're not listening. So other people just are more obedient. So <laughs> well, sometimes you hear him and you have you say, "Are you sure?" <laughs> mm -hmm, that's right. Yeah. Well, it is there are ways, and that's the hard part because I want to reason through it and figure it out. Right. And and what where's the faith in that if you if you got it all figured out? True. Mm -hmm. And he's uh, it's interesting that he does all of this in the synagogue. So he's he's on the throne. He's speaking from the mercy seat here. He's in the synagogue, the temple. He is the temple. He's not outside on some rock on some mountainside. He's in the synagogue. So he's he's on the mercy seat in the most holy of holies. Um, sharing this, these very, very intimate and spiritual thoughts. You know what, Julie? It just hits me awfully funny about what happened there because you know what? You gave that guy a, quite the testimony. You think anybody's going to believe him? <laughs> uh, I, like, 
I like when Jesus says to his disciples, I have food to eat of which you do not know. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish the work. Mm -hmm. Oh, back to my 12, there was 12 baskets of fragments. Fragments. Right. I love you. I love all these thoughts that you're bringing out, Jeff and James, and it's just so deep and rich. We got the 12 tribes. God is good. That's good. You know, you wonder if there's 12 pieces of bread there because it's the 12. 12 tribes and, and it's God's way of saying lovingly every single tribe matters to me mm-hmm. every single one of you is important and cherished and right. you, study those, you study those tribes and you think you know what good did the tribe of Simeon do or even Reuben or you know I mean some people had lots of good things that things in their tribe and others But yet in the 144,000, there's 1,200 of each of those, and they overcame by the blood of the lamb. And that's the bottom line, that we can overcome. We're all different. We all think differently in our group here. You know, Craig isn't here, but, you know, he's got his angle, and everyone's got a different angle because that's the angle that God created us so we could be part of the body. And right. every single one is precious to God and important and integral. Amen. John has 21 chapters in it. And we're here winding up John chapter 6. And he's telling the disciples already that there's going to be one that's going to betray him. And right. yet Christ picked Judas to be one of the 12. Mm-hmm. He had potential. He saw the potential. You know, it's wild when you look at this. uh, In 42, you're looking at his birth. At 52, they're looking at his death. And in 69, they're looking at his resurrection. Mm. Good one. And they're asking, you know, well, they're, you were born here and, you know, how can you give us the flesh to eat? Cause he's going to die. And 69, they end up saying, you know, well, we believe that you are the son of God. The living Birth, God. Death and resurrection. Yeah. He's yeah. He just writes it all out there. This is what's going to be happening. And they're, they're probably saying, this is hard to understand, man. Yeah, the whole story is in six. So uh, it, the promise here is uh, we're, we're actually experiencing yeah. the promise in verse 58, aren't we? Uh, mm-hmm. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever and ever. Uh, mm-hmm. we, we're meeting here. We're eating this bread. We're Amen. spiritually and the Holy Spirit to guide us. Right. And um, the promise mm-hmm. there is that um, we're going to live forever and ever. Amen. It gets back to uh, Jeff's earlier point, you know, the, the really, um, I hate the, the, I hate, but I find it very limiting. Uh, the very positive thought here is that we're eating the bread anytime that we share and uh, it um, should reinforce and, I believe that we're going to live forever and ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that's so true because Lori, we kept on bringing up belief there, right? But in 69, he says, also, we have come to believe and know. Yeah. Mm. King James says, He's, and are sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Believe and are sure. And know. I, I love that. Mm-hmm. Susan, can you give those three verses again? I, I got the 42. Okay. Um, I was just looking 52? at the June 52, quarreled among themselves, saying, how can he man give us his flesh to eat? You know, which I see as his death, right? 
Okay. And what was the third one? 69 or, you know, just looking at, we come to believe that you it's are 62 or 62. No, no, no. no it's, 69. it's them speaking that I, yeah. I'm seeing. It. It's their, it's their questioning it was or it's, it's 68, right? Really 68. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. That's resurrection. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Life. Life. I think it's wonderful that that God uses such practical illustrations that are so they're very deep and eternal and yet easy for a child to understand that when you eat bread, you get stronger and you have to eat bread. You have to keep eating every day or you're going to die. And if we don't take in Christ, we're going to die mm. spiritually. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful object lesson. Mm -hmm. And when we eat, you know, you are what you eat. So what you're taking in is what you become, the health of the body. It's just like the health of your soul. What you're taking in as you're eating Christ, you're, you're taking that in. What are we? Are we feeding on the flesh or the spirit? I guess maybe the flesh isn't the right example when it says, who eats my flesh. I mean, when I say flesh, the carnal nature. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to partake for eternity. Mm. Because we're eating something. We're always eating something. A question, a comment, uh, however you want to call it. We go back to 622 through 625 or 626. Do you, do you see the miracle there that he could have been speaking of? Oh, was the uh, calming of the, uh, the sea. In the midst of the storm, when he walked on, when he walked well, on, well, well, no, but he, he got into the boat with the disciples, yeah. right, and went yeah. to the far side. So the yeah. people go to the far side seeking him, and there's only one boat there, but Jesus isn't there. They find him back on the other side, and, yeah. and you know, and that's why they ask, "When came th thou hither?" Mm. Yeah. In right. other words, how did you get here? Exactly. I took the helicopter. <laughs> Can't get there from here. <laughs> well, that's a good question. How did he get there? He got there spiritually. Absolutely. He got there because of the miracle. Oh, I thought he was. Oh, I'm still Remember when Philip went to the Ethiopian when he was done teaching him? Yeah. Boom, he was in the next town. <laughs> well, That's if you go back to if you go back to verse 21, and it says, and they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whether they went. Yeah. Immediately. He, he transcends the natural laws. He transcends them. Yeah. But he was on the water. Is that how remember, they did it? Beam me up, Scotty. Remember we, yeah, when we read in, in that scripture verse, you showed us, Lori, was it 19 or 20, Revelation 20, right? Where, where his appearance and the earth and everything goes back, goes away. Mm. That is appearing. Mm. Mm -hmm. You mean when it rolls up like a scroll? No, no. No, there was no room. Yeah. Oh. Um. Don, so does he transcend natural law, or are these just natural laws that we don't see because there is there was nobody like him? He actually conformed to God's law. He's uh, yeah. He's outside of our. He's outside of our dimension of thinking. He's, he's in infinity, so yeah, we well, can comprehend that. The reason, no, no, he, he came as a human. Right. Right. right? He, he was a human, and he had conformed his thinking and his ways 
to the law of love. And so maybe he was just practicing laws that are available to us if we will conform to the way we were designed to operate. So like, you like will what Laurie was talking things. about with Philip. Yeah. Like Philip. So you will yeah. Well, also, so you, he was, so he be. was, whether he came here in human form or not, he was still the creator. Mm -hmm. And the creator is above the things he creates, so. No, I'm, I'm, but, I'm thinking that he is showing us what's available to us if mm -hmm. we will uh, learn of him. These I, I things you all do and greater. Right. Just, I, I see where you're going, Brian, because um, he he was he was brought there by his father, right? He obeyed. He 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 came in to surrender to his father, and I believe it's his father that brought him to where he was. No. I don't. It wasn't on any power of his own, but on exactly. his on, on his surrender to God. And then exactly. you're saying, as we are, because he says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So our, these things as well can happen to us because of him. Well, he did that with the disciples when he sent them out. They were healing and restoring people. And we are supposed to be able to do that if our faith is as strong as the disciples were when, they, when he sent them out. So theoretically, yes, we should be able to do. Peter walked on water. These things ye shall do and greater. Well, if you go back to Elijah, when he wanted to cross the water, he slapped the water with his cloak and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Now, Elijah didn't open the water. God did. But Elijah was impressed to do it. Yeah, it, I, I agree with you, uh, Sue, that this was not Jesus uh, acting. This was his father acting on his behalf. And um, it's He's no always different. reiterated his father. Yeah, and it's mm -hmm. no different than what happened with the feeding of the 5,000. Mm -hmm. It's the same spiritual experience. Right. It, it transcended. It, it would, I don't know what, I don't know, I don't know if that's the right word, but it, it was, it was, <laughs> it was beyond from, our reality it was fulfilled take, in him by to the take father. five loaves of bread and to pass it to one person and it kept passing to another to another to another is the same movement we're seeing here of mm -hmm. or the same experience we're seeing here of his um um coming across the water but it was the father that um that um was within him that was doing this he right. did not this. He did not do this. And everything he's saying there, he's saying that his, his father did it. I mean, he's, yeah, he said, he said of myself, I can do the nothing. Right. The father does the works. In which we ourselves say the same thing. It's nothing of ourselves that I can do. Right. But, but through Jesus Christ. And, and it goes back if, 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 you know, when he's saying that, Jesus is not offended by the father. No. He speaks freely about him. He gives him thanks. He he he, he acknowledges everything comes from him. He's he's not offended by his father at all. Right. He's just not offended by him. He loves yeah. him so much. Yeah. 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 For his glory. For his yes. glory. Every time. It's for his father's glory. For his namesake, yes. He he yeah. he, he he understands his namesake. No. Can, I, can I circle back to Sue's comment? So, verse 42, we're looking at his birth. Verse 52, they're saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So they have a choice here. Can they eat his flesh? Can they not eat his flesh? Yeah. And yeah. the third angel's message is verse 68. Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou Amen. hast words of eternal life no. and and that's only spoken by those who have taken his flesh to eat amen so don't yeah. take his flesh to eat because we see this here and they did not believe they said show us a sign 
Well, I've given it to you. Yeah. So there you go, Sue, the three angels. Amen. Thank you, Jeff. Awesome. God is good. <laughs> I was I was looking at 69 and 70, and I was just thinking, is, is 70 a kind of a rebuke of 69? And we believe and sure that you, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus says, have I not chosen you 12? Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Amen. Yes. But it also goes to show that, you know, we think, you know, he's speaking for everybody. And sometimes we do that. And, there, and there's somebody in your group that, you know, you can't read their heart. You don't know what their inwards are. You can just assume what their outwards are. Yes. You know, um, I, I like what you brought up because didn't later on he say, I have kept the ones that you have given me, right? Yeah. And I have not lost any except for the one that was meant to be lost, that had chosen to be lost, I, I, I guess uh, you would say, right? Um, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Verse 46, but there are some of you that believe not. I mean, he, you know, who is he talking to here? You know. Well, he's talking to the Jews. The inner group as well as the outer group, is he not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because verse 61 is talking about his disciples are murmuring. You know, we, we talked about that an hour ago. Oh, yeah, because at the beginning, right, you have the, the group, the, the first group, the second group is the Jews, and the third groups are the apostles, correct? Right? When yeah. you said the multitude, right, you follow with two with the multitude, to the Jews, and 41 to the disciples, the three comings. Amen. And yet I love in verse 37, when he says, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Amen. That's all the people groups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, in 61, I believe he's talking to the 12 as, as well as those who left. They're all called his disciples. Mm -hmm. um, yes. You know, and, and then he gets down to the, to the 12. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Dan, go ahead. No, 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 I was just saying, I just thought that, you know, in, in 61, he's, he's talking to the, the 12 as well as those who all left. Um, and then, you know, then in 66, though some of those that were murmuring just walked no more with him. And then he speaks directly to the 12. Yeah, because he says, do you also want to go? Yeah. I saw, uh, the, I was just looking at the four, four verily verilies that he has here. And of course, the verse, first verily verily, I believe is in 20, 26, when he said that, you know, you, you seek me because you did eat the loaves and were filled. The second verily verily, verily says, well, the true bread is going to come from heaven. And then the third very verily says that uh, that he that believes on me because I am the bread of life. And then the fourth verily is that except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Oh, very good. So, so with that concept, look at fifty six again. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. So, I mean, we have no problem talking about the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, right? Mm -hmm. And we have no problem with saying the Holy Spirit is one of the Trinity. So really, God and the Son are dwelling within us. It's just a special work of that aspect of the Holy, of the, of the Trinity that we refer to the Holy Spirit on, on that aspect. And how, do, how does the Holy Spirit live? How did Christ live? It's through the indwelling of the Father in him. 
So we have to eat the Holy Spirit. We have to eat the Bible in this case for us to maintain the health of the Holy Spirit within us. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. <clears throat> I can see that. My word is life. My word is life. Thank you. My word is transforming. Holy Spirit. My word is eternal. Which is, his word is eternal. His law is eternal. Mm -hmm. and, and that's who he is, right? Is that not who he is? And so mm -hmm. by eating his flesh, it's eating his law. Yep. First John 5, yeah, puts, puts God in us. Yeah, first, first John 5, 16, God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. So it is the Godhead. Yep, the words I speak. In, that can dwell in us. The words I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. Every spiritual lesson has a physical lesson. A physical lesson teaches us of the spiritual. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, the plant can't grow itself. You can put seed in the ground. You can water it, but you can't make the sun shine. You might be able to put some water if your well isn't dry, but it's really, you're bringing God. us back to Job and God speaking. <laughs> Seriously, you know, in my garden, yes, I put the seed in the ground, and but I didn't make that seed grow. Yeah. I did nothing compared to what God did. I mean, it's yeah. the same thing with righteousness by faith. We can't make ourselves become mature. But we can let God do his work in us. Amen. We can rest in him. And that's the work. The work is allowing him to work. It's that we're choosing. Only, because it's a verb. You're choosing. We're the only creation that fights against God. The birds know when they're supposed to fly south and north and how they're spilled their nest they're totally obedient it's only man that that fights against god kicks against the pricks i don't know my cats eat birds and i try to tell them that's not appropriate <laughs> <laughs> i see your point but oh lord <laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> yep, and that seed has to die first, right? Like we learned in Sabbath school. Right. And that so plant is first, perfect at each stage of its life. development. Yeah, you know, it's, it's amazing. It is. It's the gospel. God's amazing. In these simple lessons, mm -hmm. we get profound principles. Utterly profound. Oh, did I also mention out of the twelves that chapter seven goes into the Feast of Tabernacles? Yeah, that's Isn't highlighted. It? So this whole thing is kind of framed around the twelve baskets, the the two fishes, the five barley, all the bread, the bread, the bread, the bread, right into the Feast of Tabernacles. The bread. Well, really, it goes from feast to feast, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Right. That's where he seems to, yeah, mm -hmm. that's where he seems to dwell in these stories. But, Passover but or Feast of Tabernacle. The focus is what is the feast we're dwelling on, earthly things or spiritual things? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll have to admit, mm -hmm. Lori and I stopped at the Golden Corral on the way back from the whale watch yesterday in Manchester, and, and we filled up, and it wasn't necessarily spiritual things. <laughs> Well, the whale watch was pretty spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, we know how you... And, Jeff, and eating a whale of a meal was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but, Guess you didn't get seasick. We know that's your favorite thing to do, Jeff. 
<laughs> so all of this, all of this was taking place near the Passover. Not yes. the Feast of Tabernacles. If you read yes. in verse four of chapter six, the Passover was not. So the whole notion of bread, unleavened bread, um, this was all in context of, of the Passover. Right. Well, chapter yeah. seven, verse two, now the Jews' Feast of Tabernacles was at hand. Right. So like Sue said, Next it, feast. It, it did. It goes from feast to feast. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Amen. And, and, and his fulfilling of those, that, that's pretty cool. He goes Let's away. Think about where that is in the sanctuary, that's in the holy place. The showbread. It's in the holy place. Holy place, yep. That's right. Yeah, you might have missed that when I first mentioned it, Julia. Yeah, I'm here with my mother and there's no Wi-Fi, so I finally found a place, so it took me a while. Uh, I'm glad to have you here and you know thinking about your mom as well yeah we were missing you you know you know you looked you know you looked a little tired and then you gave that testimony and like everything just perked right up and you <laughs> like you know god just put life right into you yeah. must have been a must have been a rough trip down or not mm -hmm. easy it's fine. <laughs> yeah, just think about it, you know, what's that Bible word verse that says, don't worry about what someone can do to the body. And you think about mm -hmm. your car, the body, <laughs> but be afraid of what he could do the body and the body and soul, and body and soul right? Whatever so he, well, he restores you your it, soul. Not, nothing belongs to, to us mm -hmm. right. even my body doesn't belong to me it's God's my car is God's my house is God's so what would God want me to do yeah. with what belongs to him I think Lori ought to pray since she didn't yawn yet <laughs> 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 I did yawn I just did this <laughs> oh <laughs> okay let's bow our hands dear father in heaven thank you so much for the blessings that you give us um for the blessing of laughter um Amen. for the blessing of each other for the time we can spend together um for your leading in each of our lives we're so grateful for this um, continue to walk with us and live within us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, all.